everybody. Welcome back. Wingman's Hangar, episode 37. That's right, 37 episodes. Bringing everything Cloud Imperium to you. If you're new to the show, this is a little ditty about everything to do with Star Citizen and the creating of the game Star Citizen, Squadron 42, the team Cloud Imperium games all over the planet. Kind of giving you an inside look at what we're all about. We've got a pretty busy show this week. We've got the Week in Review. We've got forum feedback with your videos and questions. We've got wide world news, tidbits from the world at large. And we've got a roundtable kind of taking a look back at uh, how Crunch went for bringing the hangar to you. Well, a lot of people spent a lot of time in various offices sleeping under desks to bring that out. And we want to talk a little bit to them and, and, uh, and get their feedback, you know. All things Star Citizen, right? Let's get right to it. What happened this week? Well, we got a little video to show you. Take a look at this Void Alpha video of Terra. As you can see, this is a work in progress where we're taking one of our planet side locations and creating areas for people to land, go in, see shop owners, check out bars, get missions. This is going to be indicative of the, of the type of planet side surfaces you'll be able to see. Uh, this is very early work in progress. We don't have a lot of set pieces in there. This is more about layout and look and feel uh, before we get into building out the various locations. There'll be so many different planet side locations that um, this is kind of step one or step two. We've got a few teams doing this. We thought it'd be fun to show this to you, especially since they saw it uh, earlier this week at a certain event that we'll talk about in a little while. Uh, also, let's talk a little about the hangar. Well, we launched the hangar last week to massive fanfare, and guess what? We did not crash our website. We did sort of have some server issues <laughs> with people getting it, but you know, that's to be expected. Everybody tried to hit the server at once. We had to uh, take the crimp off the hose, so to speak, so everybody could get it. Um, we have at least 6,000 new people that have joined in the last three days. It's amazing. There's more and more citizens coming online. It's going to make the, the uh, community and it's going to make the game itself much richer environment with all these different people that will be there. So, you know, welcome to the new folks. If you're new to this show, welcome. And we apologize in advance for what you're about to see. Um, also, our server traffic. Take a look at this graph. It was pretty amazing. Look at that. Crazy how much it spiked right there. I, you know, it's incredible. You guys continue to blow us away. Two new programmers started in the Santa Monica office. We had Brandon Evans and Mark Abent. They started this week. They're going to be primarily right now working on the dog fighting module, which is going to be led by our very own Christopher Roberts. You know, it's very important. We've got that coming up at the end of the year, and so we're building up the team there to help bring that to you. Um, and Oh, my God. You know what it's time for? Wingman's weight. Yes, I started at 236 glorious pounds. At one point, I was down at 211, but last week, I, after Germany, just to be fair, after Germany, I'd gotten up to 216. Where am I now? Well, <laughs> back on the right track, 215. I suspect it'll go down a little faster because I'm going to start adding an exercise. <sighs> yeah, I know. Not looking forward to that either, but I'm going to do it anyway. So what else is going on this week? We have finally, it looks like, gotten some progress in our new office negotiation. We thought we had a building already procured and, and some big corporation come in and swooped it out from under us. Apparently, somebody who's been in business for 20 years is better risk than we are. We've only been in business eight or nine months, even though you guys know how cool we are, right? 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 <laughs> anyway... That place stunk anyway. Don't suck. Right? So where we got? We got a whole new place. We're pretty much very close to agreeing on terms. Um, Chris has given a stamp of approval. He's seen it. We like it. It's just now down to the crossing the I's or crossing the T's and dotting the I's. I think, I think we're going to be pretty good. So looking like we'll be moving in sometime in October. And we'll bring that all to you. We'll show you what it's like. And I think you guys are going to like it, especially some things for the visit. There's some cool things there for the visits. Well... Not only did we have an amazing event in Germany, which you guys have seen a little bit about. You saw the post yesterday. If you haven't seen it, you've got to check out the Comlink post about um, the live event. Uh, Mike cut together bits of fan videos and bits of our own videos to give you a nice look at the live event, uh, which is amazing. It was an incredible experience. But our own Benjamin Lisnick and Dave Haddock went to Dragon Con. So we thought you guys might like to see what that was about. So guess what? Come on in, Ben. 
Hey there, wingman. Come on in, man. Scooch in. Get a little close. Don't lean in. Just scooch in. So you were in Dragon Con this yeah, week. Yeah, we were in Atlanta last week. It was amazing. Dave Haddock and I, uh, we just had a fantastic time. There were citizens everywhere. We saw them wearing the shirts. Other people begging to get shirts because they couldn't get them yet. Uh, we do need to get some more shirts, and those will absolutely. be coming. What Sandy's working hard on that. So absolutely. I know that's a big, it's a big want from people out there. Yeah. Uh, we, we had a Star Citizen panel. Uh, Dave and I were thinking it would be, you know, a room with a couple people in it, and people waited for over an hour. Standing room only, three hundred and fifty people in there. Oh they turned gosh. people away at the door. It was it was amazing, and the, it was just a great audience and a great time. We. It, it's shocking, it. isn't it? I mean, the, the fans have been amazing everywhere we go, and I think we continually underestimate the passion that they have. I mean, we all know we have it, but it, clearly it's not just us. It's just unbelievable walking around a convention and having people come up to me and go, oh my God, you're Ben Lesnick. <laughs> <laughs> That's <Wow>. cool. <laughs> so now you're newly married and your wife's probably like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> But that's what wives are for, you know. It's but let the let, it's more fun to be out there at the Grand Con. So how long you got a panel? Was it an hour long? Hour long panel, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and you and Dave took it on. Now Dave is our who? lead writer. Our lead writer. Dave our lead Haddock. writer. Right, uh, right. He's responsible for pretty much all of our fiction. He's amazing, and the the fans loved him too. Uh, I got to give a shout out to the uh, team at Mug Nation who uh, who set up this all up for us. They let us use their booth on Saturday. Uh, just a great group of people. Uh, one of them put them under our stresses and uh, temporary tattoos on his head. Uh, <laughs> they, they treated us right. That's very cool. And that's uh, and we'll be doing more and more of these events. You and Sandy will be organizing things to, to go around. I mean, we, we it seems that um, getting out with the community is, is a really big, important part of, of what we're doing here. Yeah, now that we know how great our community is, we're going to get out there as much as we can. Exactly. And, it's, and so it's awesome. Thank you very much for the report. Um, now, what else are we doing this week? Patching. Patching. We're doing a lot of patching for the hangar. Now, for those out there who don't know, some of the patches will be, you know, just incremental fixes to things that we're reading about in the forums. Um, you know, make, making walls reappear after they might have disappeared after a while. You know, just little things that matter to, to the patch. There'll be other hangar releases, though. There'll be difference between patches will be coming a lot. So, you know, if you haven't played with your hangar in a while, you might want to ch turn it on every day or two and see, see what's up there because things are always being patched. But every now and then, we're going to have a, a pretty big... I wouldn't call it maybe another release or some big events or big... Yeah, we've got some cool stuff in the pipeline. Cool, stu cool stuff in the pipeline for the hangar. In fact, the hangar is the first foray, the baby step into our universe, so we'll continue to grow off of that organically into different directions. In fact, that brings us to a point. The, the reason we have the hangar feedback thread, which maybe be here if we can get Michael to put this here, is uh, we want your feedback on what things you'd like to see in the hangar, because now we have a hangar live team. We're breaking up into pods. We've got the dogfighting pod, the hangar live team, the integration team, the planet side team, the first person shooter team, you know, just a lot, a lot of different things. And we're all obviously working together. I mean, we all, it's kind of like a you know, we all cross-section each other, but there are people that are dedicated to certain portions. And while that's happening, there's now a Hangar Live team, and we want to know what you guys want. In fact, you guys might want something like, I don't know, this. You know, the best part of that might have been the, the uh, awesome sound effects that Galloway clearly had put in there. <laughs> okay, we had a little fun with that, but you know. Quality effort. That, that Quality. Was, we actually recorded that today. We had, we had uh, Forrest put it together, and it was we thought that was kind of fun. So, But we are looking for things that, for you guys that you want to see in the hangar, because you know, it'll help drive our direction, as we've always talked. We're doing this together. So, uh, Rob, guess what time it is? It's time for... Forum Feedback! That guy's back again. He's always around. I know, it's crazy. So it, let's, get to, let's get right to it. I think they've got some good questions this week. Um, right from Horace, is there any artificial limit on guild size, or can I bring as many fans as I like into my guild? Well, that's an easy one to answer, because we don't know yet. 
<laughs> um, my guess is that we won't have limits necessarily, but we may make you organize it a little more as the guilds get bigger. Maybe but, squads or something of that yeah, nature? Yeah, we've been working a little bit on the nature of guild tools and everything recently, so we're getting there, but we're not sure just yet what we'll be able to do. Well, I don't, we, I mean, the number of people in your guild, you, you can have as many as you want, That does, but that doesn't mean you can all be in the same instance and stuff, right? Yeah, exactly. And your org chart could look messy. A messy org chart. Well, you know how that is. <laughs> that can be all over the place. From John Shepard, he sent us this video. I've got a question for you while I hitch a ride on the underside of this pirate carrier. Do you like the idea of hosting an in-game radio to keep us Star Citizens company on our long journeys? Oh snap, they detected my transmission. See you in the verse. Why an in-game radio you say? Why, uh, why would you ask? As long as it doesn't suck. It uh, don't suck. You know, um, we've talked about uh, we're going to have some sort of content for the universe, what that is, whether the Hangar Show transitions over to that or whether we create other new content. There'll be definitely something that goes, you know, we'd like to track the lore and create something around that. So um, you guys will help us do that too. Yeah, and that's, that's a lot of content because remember, slow communication, which means a station can't broadcast to every system. So we're going to need a lot of stations. A lot of stations. Wow. Fans. Fans. Pony up. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> From Thor, he says, will shields have an area effect? Is it possible to terminate a shield only on the back or front of a ship? Ah, okay. I see. I, see, I think I see what they're asking. Okay, here. yeah, sure. So shields, if you think about Wing Commander, it used to be front, back, left, right sure, shields. Sure. Well, we've expanded that a little bit, so now you can get just a bubble shield that is only one surface. It has a little more damage potential for the whole thing, and so that can be shot from any direction, but then there's also two-phase shields, four-phase shields, and actually if you look at some of the ones that are already on the ships, they're different numbers of faces. So yes, you could take down the shield in the back of a freelancer, for instance. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. Now could you, the energy can be redistributed if you're actually, so like if you were getting shot from the back, could you then move your shield more power to that, or if you have that control mechanism? Or? Shields rear! Yes, of course. Well, there you go. So there's both, there's both Offensive capabilities in regards to that and defensive capabilities, which is pretty cool. From Mr. Big, I would like to fund Star Citizen more in the future and would consider upgrading my Aurora Pledge to freelancer level. Will participating in any of the test modules prevent me from being able to reclaim my package and upgrading it to something else? Well, A, we appreciate the backing in the I first know, place. I know, absolutely. That's Thank awesome. you very much for Thank that. Thank you. We all, yes, you can upgrade sure, your Sure, upgrade anytime you want. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we are eventually going to lock down things. They'll become attached to characters in the game. Um, but, of course, we're not to that point yet. It's going to be a while before we do that. And, we'll, and you will announce that. Yeah, a that's long not something. In yeah, that's not something that would just, just happen. We Surprise! Will sure. Yeah, well, that would be bad. <laughs> that would be bad. That we, would we, be very bad. <laughs> we would get that out early before and let you know. So, yeah. from... I don't know how to say this name. Can you say Veregar? Vrekgar. Vrekgar. Is it possible to modify the window of a cockpit to go from something like this, it's all the bars, to something like this? Oh. Well, that looks better. Well, that's an interesting question. I mean, I don't know. What do you think? Well, I think there's probably going to be another pass on cockpits at some point because, I mean, I have to admit that the view area is not very big on some of our cockpits, and I think we are all aware of that, and we want to do something about it there at some go. point. We've just been a little busy with the hangar stuff. Yeah, getting it out there, and yeah. and again, that's one of those things. If you guys want to see stuff, let us know, and you know we can probably adjust. We'll see what we can do. Yep. From Wagner, will fuel and ammo take up or be limited by cargo space on your ship? Well, I don't think it's going to go in cargo space, although you could carry extra fuel as a cargo. Um, you can, in the uh, upgrade space that ships have, you can add additional magazines for physical weapons mm -hmm. or add uh, drop tanks, for instance, under the wings of the Hornet. Mm -hmm. We're going to probably allow that at some point. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not part of your cargo space. It's part of your extra space. But other than that, every ship has a default fuel tank that just has a certain capacity. There you go. From Polarin. I understand the Constellation is a multi-crew ship, but what happens if my friends are offline and I still want to fly? Will AI replace them, or can the captain actually handle the ship on his or her own? Well, we've, we've definitely said before that you can hire AI crew for your ship. Right, definitely. But, I mean, in the case of a multi-crew ship, you could, in theory, handle it yourself. Now, it's not going to be as effective without crew. For instance, there are avionics upgrades that would let your turrets be computer-controlled. They just won't be 
as cool as, you know, Luke and Han in the turrets. Right. <laughs> so. Are Luke and Han available to buy in these games? <laughs> Coming soon, Not Luke yet. and Han. <laughs> With new names. <laughs> right. Hook and Lawn. Coming soon to, to, to a turret near you. <laughs> from, from this video from Hark. No one will figure that out. I know. Here's a video from Hark. CIG Design HQ. This is Captain Hal Conover of the privateer ship Rosinante. I am requesting further detail on how Design HQ sees the command and control module working in a small fleet action. Will my CNC operator have a tactical overview of the battle space, and will the Rosinante have to remove our keel turret to mount the module? What level of detail can she give in instructions to our fighter escorts, and how much of a force modifier should our fighter wing expect when traveling with the CNC equipped ship? CIG, this is Rosinante, out. Okay then. That's, um, that's a great question. That's uh, we get that a lot. I know. I, I think are really curious about. CNC. Yeah, I think Chris kind of answered some of that in last week's forum feedback. But you know, yeah, let's, let's hear you know more. I mean, basically, all those things are are reasonable. We just we don't know all of the details yet. But yes, it's, you're going to have some sort of tactical overview of the battle, depending on whether we're doing voice communication in the game. You can probably give orders directly to the other pilots in mm -hmm. your group if you know if you're all on the same voice network. Um, so there will be. Some degree of all of that, we don't know what the degree is yet. Uh, we still have to design a lot of that. A very good question, by the way. Loved the green screen backdrop. Liked it a lot. Very From nice. Normandy, will upgrade modules for ships be universal, or will each ship have its own upgrade aftermarket? Well, most of them are universal. You've already started to see that some in the mm -hmm. hangar, where you can switch the guns out to any of the different ships in your hangar, which is go. really great. Um, some of the upgrade slot pieces will change with the size of the ship, but most of them will be like batteries for weapons. Those will be pretty much universal. You can just plug them into any ship. Okay, cool, cool. From, this, now this name's pretty easy to see. Rocket Jockey, and I'm not <laughs> butchering that one. From Rocket Jockey, will there be advanced tutorials in game where we are able to learn more about complex flight skills and maneuvers, particularly those of an evasive or racing nature? For example, a Crazy Ivan or Barn Swallow. Barn Swallow. Well, those are two good movies. You got the Crazy Ivan, which was uh, Hunt for Red October, and Barn Swallow was, of course, Firefly. Hmm. So, you know. There was Crazy Ivan and Firefly, too. There was, but it was first in Hunt for Red October. Firefly's cooler. Uh, yes, it was. <laughs> oh, Serenity. Mike just informed That's us from the behind movie. the camera that Serenity. Firefly hmm. was the show. Yeah, well, he's right, probably. Yeah, probably. So, anyway, will there be advanced tutorials? Yes, simulator. The simulator will have some training stuff. Now, I don't know how advanced they'll get, and it may be one of those things where we keep adding content over time. Um, but True, and as we do add content, well, you know, that's exactly where you'll go to learn how to fly and, and to engage and to, you know, as we add details or levels of detail complexity, that's where you're going to go learn it. And that's, mm -hmm. that's um, you know, that'll be in their hangar. It will. Perhaps. Hmm. Soon-ish, hopefully. Soon. Soon. <laughs> Redacted. <laughs> I wouldn't say soon. It'll definitely be there. Soon as in before the end of time. Yeah, exactly. Uh, from Legante. Hailing winds, Legante. As you're aware, prolonged isolation of each space or planet side can have adverse effects on people. Having someone to interact with is important to help us. That being said, what kind of interaction among the crew is planned during low action times such as traveling between two points? There you go, the guy. At least he's going to win every time. Watch out for the space madness. Yeah, right, exactly. So uh, what, what are we going to allow people to do on the long uh, journeys? We've talked before a little bit about having some sort of mini games, you know, card playing, whatever in the game, but they probably won't, there won't be much available at launch time. It's, well, that's one of those things you just continue to add in when you have a little time. So we'll, we'll have things that you can do interactively and, you know, you can play around with the pieces of your ship, of course. And if they got suggestions, send them in. Send them in. Obviously, they all want to go to the bathroom, it seems. That's been it's a big... It's really thing. important. I know. Apparently so. You want to be able to go to the bathroom. <laughs> From uh, Jean, or Zahn says, will there be cooling systems in ships? For instance, a laser gun could be damaged and overheat, eventually leading to an explosion. A cooling system could prevent that. It could. In fact, if you look at the Aurora brochure, there was a, a cooling system on one of the Auroras by default. So yes, we do have coolers. They are part of the engine modifier system that's gotten moved into the generic upgrade space. So that may even be what their modifier bonus is that they got from the stretch goal. So definitely a yes on that yes. question. Well, that's, that was an easy one. From Zertz, he says, can I select the basic hangar instead of the upgraded versions? 
we get this a lot, by the way. I may mm-hmm. want to live out that Han Solo on the fringe style fantasy in a gritty hangar as opposed to the high priced deluxe look. I don't think it was Han, it was Lon, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, Lon. Lon, Lon yeah. <laughs> no, it was San Lolo. San Lolo, right. <laughs> So can, can they uh, can can they basically choose which hangar they want to be? I mean, if if the ship fits, right? Right, exactly. Not all ships fit in all hangars. I mean, mm-hmm. a constellation in that discount hangar would not be very cozy. No. Um, but yeah, the, we've talked about that a lot. I'm not sure if we have a definite plan how we could do that, but maybe let you look at the ships that fit in the other hangars if you have a higher hangar. Um, we still have to work, strategize on that a little bit. We do, and we've built a modular system to, to allow us to be flexible in those regards. So. Yeah. Um, you know, we'll see how that goes. From ah, from Sarzu and M. Palman. I met these people, by the way, in Germany. Awesome guys. <laughs> they had their uniforms on and everything. So, uh, take it away. We are colonial movers. And we move anywhere. Get the guy to wire! Take all back! 15, 14. Sometimes you just can't get rid of a bomb. Everybody! What are you doing? Seven. Hello. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. That's it. I'm taking the day off. What now? Citizen. This is Colonel Snaplight from UE Navy. We have detected a military grid explosion and have traced it back to your ship. Cut your engines, lower your shields, and prepare to be boarded. Detecting UEE cruiser on an intercept course. Dear wingman, what happens if we get caught by UE authorities? Do we have to go to prison or can we just pay a fine? Get back to us. What else should we throw out? What is that? That's only legal in Banu space! There you go. Oh my. I know. What did they have in that box, I wonder? <laughs> no idea. So what, what happens when you get caught by the UEE? Well, you know, wouldn't it be neat if you had to go to prison and serve out your actual sentence? And, okay, no. That would be no, awful. That would, that would be awful. That would be the definition of sucking. <laughs> that would suck. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't think we're going to make you go to prison. There will probably be fines and penalties of some sort. Mm-hmm. We haven't really figured out exactly what they're going to be. But don't get caught. Don't get caught. That's the best way. All right, man. Thanks a lot, Rob. We want to join no you now. No problem. Guess what time it is. What time? Guess what day it is. I know. I want to do the hump day it's thing. It's not that day. It's not that day. It's time for Ben Lesnick and the Most Valuable Post. Hey, everybody. Ben Lesnick, your community manager here with this week's Most Valuable Post. This week, the honor goes to Jono Porter for his amazing thread. So I downloaded the assets into a sandbox editor and dot, dot, dot. This thread is just fantastic. What he's done is he's opened up the Star Citizen Hangar module, taken out all our stuff, and stuck it into the uh, Crytek editor. So he's, he's putting auroras in, uh, and beaches and forests, and it, it, it's resulted in all sorts of cool pictures. Awesome, isn't it? Uh, fantastic job, Jonah. Thank you so much. You're this week's most valuable post. Back to you, wingman. We have previously reported on the do-it-yourself spacesuit being built by Portland University anthropologist Cameron Smith. Apparently, his work has not gone unnoticed. Copenhagen Suborbitals has been building its own open-source manned rocket program, complete with microspace capsule. And Cameron Smith's spacesuit might just go along for the ride. The suit recently completed 10 days of testing in Copenhagen, including design reviews for dexterity and fit. Also, a capsule emergency escape plan. Mr. Smith has returned to the U.S. to build version 2.0 of his suit. Who knows? Perhaps you can take his designs and build your own version of his pressurized suit. And now, let's take a look back in time with This Week in Space. September 1st, 1979, 
and NASA's Pioneer 11 space probe is hurtling towards a collision with Saturn's outer rings. Packed with instruments for exploring the interplanetary medium beyond Mars and to closely examine the nature of Saturn, its rings and moons, Pioneer 11 is a veritable laboratory in space. But one of its most important goals is to blaze a trail through Saturn's ring plane for future Voyager probe missions. Is the ring safe to cross? Will Pioneer survive without serious damage? Watch out, a near miss with one of Saturn's small moons, Epimetheus, discovered only the day before. Now there's a close shave. Pioneer is through the rings, and Saturn's gravity well sends our little probe into deep space, where it will continue to radio its findings until its transmitter falls silent for all time. Pioneer 11, expanding the frontiers of man's understanding in space. And that is your Wide World News. Hey guys, we thought it'd be kind of fun to take an inside look at, at the hangar and all the things we created. And so we've got a, a whole crew of people that, that did a lot of work on the hangar here. We got Ron, we got Forrest, we got Dan, Paul, we got Kyle and Mark. Um, and we just kind of want to talk a little about what the experience was and get the hangar. Now you guys have seen the crowd's reaction to the hangar. And, and I know we've been killing it here. You guys have been putting in an insane amount of time. So what do what you think of the crowd's reaction? Well, what'd you think? Everybody loved it, man. Uh, our chat was full for what? Three days straight, mm -hmm. leading up to the hangar and then through the patch. People actually absolutely loved it. Now, uh, one of the things when you're, when you're doing game development, it, it, there's a lot of hours that get put in. We, we end up all putting in a little extra hours. And, and, but there's always one guy who seems to live at the shop, at the... At the and who, who, who do you guys think that would be? This, <laughs> this, is when, this is when I really wish that we had showers. Yeah, yeah and you know, so we do we. Showers, we, we, we yeah, everybody wishes we had showers because it got and stinky. And a laundry machine. Because yeah. yeah. between the beer and the pizza and the coffee and the, the Red Bulls the beer. and the beer <laughs> and the living here and not changing, it was pretty gross. It was pretty gross. Yeah, pretty but gross. you have to admit, Forrest. Oh, oh, Forrest was by far <laughs> the stinkiest and the, the one who was here the longest. Yeah, I remember coming in um, during the week, you know, I'd get in about 8 o'clock in the morning, you know, and Forrest would be sleeping under his, yeah, all under his desk. Like all a the, little baby. You, you didn't even, and of course, you know, the reason why is you were pretty much the guy yeah. that was building the hangar. Yeah, I felt like sent off three babies to college. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's scary like watching people like play because you're like you know all the mistakes that you didn't get to yet. And yeah. It's like oh god, work work. Don't work, go over work, there. Work, don't work. go over there. Right, and it's they're not on the elevator. Oh, they're going down the other elevator. Yeah. Can we try that? Can we test that? Yeah. Boy, that, that free, boy, that freelancer's ramp's pretty high. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what do we? I mean, the hangar's not even done, right? We've got a lot more to do. No, right? it's still evolving. Right. Yeah. It, 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 you have to admit though, the very first reaction has been pretty good. It's been yeah, it's been great. Everyone. Enjoyed it a lot. Everything worked where everyone could actually get into their ship, get out of their ship. Everyone's yeah. really stoked. It was great. So it's really a, fun to watch. About a week yeah. before that, I was convinced that the fans were going to burn this place. <laughs> <to> the <rest. laughs> I was like, "There's was no rough, way we're going to be able to do this." You got your it was seat, like, this you is not going to work. The yeah, yeah, there was like so many land. crazy crash bugs and just stupid stuff that would happen. It'd be like, I fix don't one know thing how this and the things break. Yeah. You know what though? And thank God we had. We had Dan and Paul. That's what I was going to. I was just going to say. if we didn't have Dan and Paul, man, this game would be a crap in a box. <laughs> <laughs> so the point is, that's another thing. We, we, we've been lucky in that we've been able to get a, a few guys from actual Crytek that have helped us out. It wasn't just the guys in the Austin office that were killing themselves. It was the guys in the Santa Monica office, too. So, you know, there's Dan on the uh, left there, and there's Paul on the right. So, Dan, why don't you tell everybody what you kind of did for the hangar? That elevator. <laughs> yeah, <man. laughs> just about killed you. Uh, how many days did we go back and forth on that? And just all that craziness with trying to actually get up set up, but having the character falling through it all the time. You know, yeah. we're having issues with animation. Oh, now it needs to be flow graph driven back and forth. So it was uh, touch and go, especially like a uh, few weeks out, right before we're about to ship, right? And we're still clamoring for this elevator and trying to get that set up. So not only that, uh, I was also working with Paul on the hollow table as well, and Paul can tell tell you guys a little bit about that. Yeah, there you go. Now, see, the hollow table was not quite promised to be in the original in the original thing. It was one of those things that we decided so stinking badass that we had to put it in there. And Paul, that's your baby, right? Yeah, actually, um, 
you decided like I think two weeks before we did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were like, hey Paul, finish the solo table. And yeah. I was killing myself to build up the whole code behind it. I mean, the whole interaction, it's not like, like an easy thing because there's nothing standardized. I mean, we could use a, like a normal 2D menu, but Chris was always like, oh, I want to have this awesome holographic yeah. 3D model driven table with animations here and, and transition there. So I really killed myself to, to build this up. <laughs> I, I think I finished it really five in the morning one day before we, we yeah. released the yeah. hangar, so it was really like super close to, to get this in. And yeah, and, and besides that, I had to always support Dan for, for all the like all the interactions, like entering the ship and yeah. open doors and sit down on the seats. I also wrote a lot of code to, to make actually the interaction with the ship happen, so I always had to switch between, okay, more holding table work, and then Dan was like, oh, and I need to hear the stores to, to meet functionality, just go on and off. We don't have actually triggers for that, so I was like, Hacking something in for him really fast to get this working, then back to the holo table and yeah, just crazy two weeks. Yeah, it was all over the place. It was, it was, it was you know, and the, and the truth of the matter is, while we were there at the live event, um, I was I was still patching the machines 20 minutes after we'd opened the doors. I was running around all the different machines, patching them up, and praying to God that that patch was the one that was going to completely work. And and, and uh, as you guys saw on the on the live stream which uh, you, we came out with uh, on yesterday afternoon on Comlink it worked out great and it's all good. Now Kyle, Kyle when the people see the first time they launch or try to get the hangar that's your work. Yeah. Why don't you talk a little about what you did there. So I, I worked on the, the build system which takes the code and, and generates the actual game that you're going to play and then we need to create a patch of that that uh, then gets distributed out and so we didn't actually get like the CDN until like two weeks before we needed to actually use it. It was right before you guys were going out to Germany and right. we were like uploading the patch and making sure you had it on the computers and then we weren't sure if it was going to patch or not because we hadn't really tested it internally and um, it's it's amazing how well the system worked like it just started to work for you guys and you guys were getting the patches we were making builds here uh, internally and then you know uploading them and you guys were downloading them just fine and I mean we had some pretty awesome statistics coming off of the CDN like how many terabytes of patch data people were downloading once it finally get, came out yeah that it's was amazing well it's amazing I, mean, I think that's a testament honestly to the team that you guys have now mark you were here a lot too because yeah. I remember getting the emails bit. at like three or four in the morning, and, and um... God, I was stinking, man. Oh, <laughs> I was stinking, and my my clothes. I'd come home like five a.m., and my wife would be sleeping in bed, and I'd, you know, take off my clothes and get in bed, and she'd go, she'd roll over and go, God, you need a shower so bad. <laughs> it's like I couldn't even go to sleep because she would she would make me like go go take a shower before. I, but it was it was rough, but. I am shocked. I'm I'm shocked that it all happened like it did. I mean, it, that's just a testament to like how badass this team is. Yeah. Because I mean, we were taking bets on Paul. Like, man, is he gonna get that table in? I don't know, man. It's a, a, man, you, dude, you did it, man. You uh, you shocked the world. It was awesome. You know, that was pretty incredible. I, it was funny because I was. Like, I would always have questions for Dan and Paul, but they would be like, I'd get on Skype and I'd type out the whole thing and then I would back it up and say, all right, forget it. I'm not bothering them, man. If I bother them, they're, they're not going to be able to Their heads are going to explode. So. The last two weeks, I think the coolest thing to see was every day, every time we did a nightly build, the next day, if you viewed the game, the improvements that yeah. you saw. Yeah. Oh, man. Every night it was like huge upgrades That's every cool. night. Yeah, and we're kind of going to see a little bit of that with yeah. the fans. As, as we're going to do like micro upgrades as we yeah. go. I think yeah. we're doing a patch right now, I believe, today. Yeah, we're, yeah. Testing, we're testing it out right, uh, right. And go on, Mark. And then Dan was working on the Constellation, and oh, we yeah. didn't even see the Constellation <laughs> until the very last, like, minute of the last day. And then, like, we're like, is it going to work? Is it going to work? You know, and then we're like, it goes up, we're like, oh, my God. <laughs> I know. And it was like, it was like all in slow motion, and it was like, beautiful, man. Yeah. It was like, and then we're in the Constellation, we're like, oh, my God, we're in it. Don't touch anything. You know, it's like, let's just look at it. Just you know, the funny part it. about it, people are like, 
they'd see things in the constellation go, touch that, touch that, do that, you know, we were like, no, you know, we're, we'll stick Dude, to what I we know like, works. I was right like, now. oh man, I, I don't want this to blow up, no, it's, it's and like, but it worked. It's I mean, like it the was elevator, like, Nate didn't like the speeds, so let's change the speed, we probably got, we're going, no, 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 yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Yeah. no, 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 leave it as it is. It's working, don't even look at it. So now, Ron, we get to, we get to the schedule, like, you were the, you were the schedule master, you're the one who kind of owned everything going forward, and, and, uh, We've got a lot to do for version two. A ton to do. And I mean, we had a ton to do for version one. We were, I mean, we crammed in probably more than we should have. Right. But I mean, the team pulled it off, man. And like you said, we're working on another patch. We'll probably do one or two more before we do another entire version of the hangar coming up. Mm -hmm. So that's, I mean, what we're looking at right now is what exactly we can fit in in the next couple of months. Right. And we're going to, we're going to get the feedback from yep. the folks out there as to what they like and what they've been impressed with. We've. <laughs> Forrest, you've been messing around with some stuff, with some flames and some... Some, some evil Knievel. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I, it's pretty awesome. I call it buggy bowling. <laughs> buggy <laughs> bowling. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, buggy yeah, bowling. Yeah. Yeah. Copyrighted people. Copyrighted. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> buggy, buggy bowling. The, 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 buggy bowling. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So there you have it. It's kind of an inside look at uh, what went on at Cloud Imperium the last, you know, basically last couple months before the hangar. And, you know, we've got another big thing coming up in the dogfighting which is going to be led from LA and also supported here and you know we've got pods all over so we're going to be working hard to uh, bring this game to you. Alright well that's our show this week I want to thank everybody here for joining us and uh, thanks to Ben Lesnick and, and Chris Roberts and Sandy and everybody but most importantly thanks to the pledgers and the subscribers who allow us to, uh, to put this show out there. Uh, coming up this week well there's a lot of patching and patching and more patching. And if you've got something you want to see in the hangar, get it in there. We know Forrest has got something he wants to see, and you guys have seen just a small bit of that. Um, we're also going to talk a little bit next week about pod-based development. We're now breaking teams into pod live teams, first-person shooter teams, dogfighting teams, all to bring the... And then we have an integration team, so it's all going up. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. You'll find out exactly what goes on. Submit your questions in the RSI forums. Join us for Wingman's Hangar 15 minutes after the show. And remember, if you want your stuff features on Wingman's Hangar, send it in. We just might use it. Where are we going to see him? In the verse. to ask you a bunch of questions and I want to have them answered immediately. You're a damaged goods lady. Fuck you. Holding her is dangerous. Word of this gets out. It could generate sympathy for the rebellion in the Senate. She'll give away our position any chance she gets. She's your baggage. You fall behind and you're on your own. We're going to play a wonderful game called Who is my daddy and what does he do? To be or not to be. Not to be. I that. This boy is the offspring of Anakin Skywalker. Come on, don't bullshit me. You give me the names of your drug suppliers and distributors, and I'll tell the judge what a nice cooperative killer you are. One of us is in deep trouble. You lack discipline. It's time now to turn this mush into muscles. You're a fucking choir boy, you me! A choir boy! Stop being such a pussy! I tell you that this station will be operational as planned. No more complaining, no more to go to the bathroom, nothing! But he asked the impossible. There is no bathroom! I've accepted the truth that you were once Anakin Skywalker, my father. I'm a cybernetic organism, Cyberdan Systems Model 101. It is the name of your true self you've only forgotten. You cold blooded bastard. I'll tell you what I think of it. I live to see you eat that contract. But I hope you leave enough room for my fist because I'm going to ram it into your stomach and break your goddamn spine! Do it! Do it! Come on! Kill me! I'm here! Come on! Do it now! Kill me! It's not a tumor. It's not a tumor at all.